If you fancy knocking up this bowl of oozy, creamy comfort food next time you're camping, then please keep watching. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jane Sarche. I write recipes for a living. This is Myrtle, my Volkswagen camper van, and it's together in this teeny weeny little kitchen that we bring you guys awesome one pot camping recipes. Sounds like fun? please whack subscribe, but we'd love to have you along for the ride. So today's recipe, it takes a little bit longer than my usual one pot recipes, but as you know, risotto, it does need time to get that whole oozy, gooey, mm, creaminess going on. So you can, I have seen people throw all the ingredients into the pan and just let it simmer for like, 15 minutes whatever i i don't recommend you do that you will still get a bowl of food out of it don't get me wrong i'm being a food snob but if you take your time and if you put all this effort and love into your risotto i promise you at the end the results are just magnificent it's such an easy and delicious dish it's oh and in these colder nights now this is proper hearty, warming, warm your soul comfort food. So please, please give it a go. This recipe is also available on my blog. I do a chorizo and prawn risotto over there, but Johnny is going to be eating this for his tea and Johnny doesn't do seafood. Even so much if I wave a prawn over the pan, he wouldn't eat it. So I'm just going to kind of butcher this down and we're just going to have a chorizo version today. But I will link to the recipe with prawn in as well or just chuck in some cooked prawns at the end, whatever. Uh, it's it's really nice. They actually go really well. The textures are really good between the chorizo and the prawns. And you've obviously got that warm, slightly spiciness of the chorizo and that cooling sweetness from the prawns. It's a really lovely contrast. Okay, I'm just going to put a tiny drop of oil in. The chorizo has got quite a lot of fat in it anyway, so you don't need a lot of oil. I just kind of want to get that pan greased up just a little bit, just to help it reduce down a little bit. Now we're going to chuck in our chorizo. Too speedy again, look, there's no sizzle, damn it. So now I've got my chorizo in a hot pan. I'm just gonna let it sit there for a few minutes, let that heat do its magic. I want the outsides ever so slightly caramelized and I want some of the fat inside the chorizo to render. And you'll start to see that there's an orange oil that comes out of the meat and that's what we want. That is full of flavor. So once the uh, chorizo is cooked down and it's just got a little bit of color on the edges, I'm gonna actually take the meat out, leaving the fat in there, and then I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients into that fat so we keep all that delicious flavor. And at this point, on your campsite, your neighbors are gonna be so damn jealous of what you're having for tea. It smells so good. Okay, can you see this oil here just starting to leak out? That's what we're after. That's where the magic happens. I dread to think how much food is down the back of the seats of Myrtle every now and then. It seems every time I cook a recipe, some food flicks down there. Okay, so now I'm going to take the meat out of the pan. Like I say, I'm going to leave the oil in there as much as possible. Okay, so put the chorizo to one side and then you're going to pop in your risotto rice into that oil and stir it around in that fat and you'll see that it starts to go that lovely orange color as it picks up all those yummy flavors. I remember the first time I ever had risotto and my dad had cooked it. My dad was a superb cook. He loved cookbooks. We had this standing joke that he'd take Delia to bed every night because he would read cookbooks like novels. And I think that's where I've got my obsession with cookbooks from. Um, the first time he made risotto, he it was, um, I think it was lardons, like little cubes of bacon that he used in it. Oh my God, I had never tasted anything so unctuous. And the bacon bits or the lardons were like crispy, caramelised. And obviously the risotto is so creamy and cheesy and rich. And I kid you not, I can still remember that. Oh, oh my God of tasting this food it was the same I had the first time I tasted sushi I still remember that as well oh my god I'm so obsessed by food and I'm also going to throw in half um, an onion that I've chopped up finely as well that can go in with the rice just get that start cooking down as well Okay, now I'm deviating from a traditional risotto a little bit. You would normally have a big pan of stock on the side on a second burner. Obviously, we're all about the one pot. So I am deviating a little bit. 
I have, however, pre-boiled my kettle, um, and I think I've got about three quarters of a litre in there. I probably won't need it all, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough, so I did measure that out. But I'm also going to use one of these funny little stock pots as well. You can use a stock cube, you can make this up in a mug or a jug or whatever first. I just thought it'd be easy, and I thought I'd fancy giving this a go, because these are still quite new to me. Oh, except I can't get it out. There we go. So I'm putting that in. Just going to let that dissolve down. And then with a risotto, the magic trick is you just add your liquid or your stock. Oh, bang goes the top camera. You just add it in a little bit at a time. And keep on stirring. And as that moisture gets absorbed into the rice, then you go in again with another little splash. And a good risotto should make your arm ache. Like, this takes effort. Like I said, you can cheat, you can throw it all in the pan and just put a lid on and cross your fingers and hope for the best. You won't get, I don't believe you'll get this creaminess effect that you get from a real risotto. These grains of rice, I'm probably about halfway through the cooking time now. The grains of rice have got bigger, they're like expanding from all the moisture and it's it's feeling different, it's feeling more stodgy and starchy, which obviously is what we want. I would imagine that these are still, there's still a crunch, a graininess in the centre of the rice. Well, I don't think we're far off now. Can you see now how syrupy that is getting? It looks and feels really, really different in the pan. Now, if I was making this at home, I would honestly prefer to use a homemade chicken stock, probably. Um, these stock pots are really handy and convenient but they they do have that sweetness to them that i'm not actually keen on i don't think a stock should have any sweetness to it personally um and i can taste that in in this it i think it's much nicer made with um with homemade stock but i'm camping well i'm kind of camping in the back garden but you know i'm camping <laughs> mm, i reckon we're there before this last lot of water or moisture has left the pan i'm just going to pop in a knob of butter I love the salty butter at this point. It really adds to that creamy sauce. All right, I'm just gonna turn that heat off. We are now cooked and I'm very excited. Look at that. What I'm also gonna do is add in a bunch of grated Parmesan as well. I'll put most of that in. I wanna save a little bit for the top at the end. And as we stir that in around, that's gonna melt into that sauce too. And it's just gonna be so delicious. <laughs> Oh my God, the smell. Wow. And then I'm gonna add in most of the chorizo, perhaps about three quarters of that. Stir that round. You know where this is going, don't you? When we serve it, we're gonna to top it all off with the rest of the chorizo and the rest of the Parmesan. My stomach is growling. I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Why don't I make risotto every single day of my life? Oh, I should have bought a smaller bowl, eh? Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit more of that cheese on top, and then we're gonna sprinkle on the rest of our chorizo pieces. Oh my Lord. I'm sorry, but even if you don't eat meat, you must be grumbling in the tummy department right now, because look how delicious does that need to look? Oh my good grief. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe as much as my stomach is enjoying it so far. Uh, if you give it a go, please don't forget to tag me or in any photos that you share online. I always love seeing my recipes being made around the planet and especially if you're camping. That just makes me so, so happy. Uh, also subscribe to the channel and ding the bell if you want to get notified each time I upload my next video. I'm getting very hot in here. So you, are you hot stuff? Mwah. Uh, I think that's it for this week. If you want to grab a bunch more free recipes, then don't forget you can subscribe to my email over on my blog. I'll leave a link to that below and in return you'll get a free little cookbook which uh, includes some easy peasy camping recipes made with instant noodles like the dried block of instant noodles. We don't use that sachet, that's nasty. Uh, we put some real flavours in with those dried noodles. So if you fancy that, please go subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get that delivered as a PDF into your inbox. Uh, I need to stop talking now because I need to go and eat. I love you all. Take care. See you soon. Uh, bye.